We are ready to do Acts chapter 19. That's what we're going to study. Hey, Thomas, I forgot. Can you hang up the uh, curtain over the thing up there? We're going to do Acts chapter 19, and we need to just go ahead and get started. All right. Now, what happened was, Paul, last class we did a lot. Oh, I didn't draw any map on my notes because we were drawing the map on the big, uh, we were drawing the map on the big uh, board on the, behind us. And so I don't have a map on my little piece of paper here. But the point was, is that Paul, remember he had cut his hair. And so I gave him a, a quick shave and he was in Ephesus. And while he was in Ephesus, uh, they said, we like what you're saying, but he had to leave. And then it talks about how there was a guy named Apollos who was mighty in the scriptures and how um, Aquila and Priscilla had talked to him. And then now he knew more accurately the things of Christ. And he went over to, I think it's Achaia. Yes, he went over to Achaia to preach there. Now, one of the keys was Paul uh, landed at Caesarea, went to the church, probably in Jerusalem, and then up to Antioch. And then after Antioch, he started going back through Galatia and Phrygia. And so that means that right in here between verses 22 and 23, that's the end of second trip. And this is the beginning of third trip. And so that happened right there in between those verses. And that's a sneaky way, uh, sneaky place to stick uh, the trips. You'd think that there might be a chapter break, but there isn't a chapter break. So it's right there between verses 22. Let me draw a better arrow. Between 22 and 23 is where the second trip ends and the third trip begins. And so then he is about to go through. And so there's the arrow of Paul going through. While he's going through, we learn about Apollos. All right. So now in chapter 19, it's going to go back to Paul talking. Okay, and after that came to pass, uh, uh, and after it came to pass that Apollos was in Corinth, remember Apollos went over the water to Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper country, came to Ephesus and found certain disciples. I'm just going to do a tiny little map, okay? There's the Nile River and the Dead Sea, and here is Paul and Apollos is over there. So... Uh -huh. This dot right here is Corinth, and this dot right here is Ephesus. And so Paul traveled through like that, and Apollos went over the water to there. So that's what's going on. You can go back and use your book if you want. All right, so he goes to Ephesus, and he finds certain disciples, and he said unto them, Did you receive the Holy Ghost when you believe? And they said to him, No, we did not so much as hear whether the Holy Ghost was given. And he said, uh, Into what then were you baptized? And they said, Into John's baptism. And Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto people that they should believe on him who should come after him, that is, on Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came upon them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. There were in all about 12 men. All right, so I just read through that story. I read through that whole story there, but I thought I'd check in with you guys. Paul has come back to Ephesus and he finds some Christians. Do you uh, fi find some disciples, find some believers in God? And he asks them a question. Do you remember what his first question is? The first question Did you receive the Holy Spirit? Did you receive the Holy Ghost? I'll put in number one. Do you remember what their answer is? No. That's a good answer, but it's not exactly. They said more than just no. They said, no, we didn't know whether the Holy Ghost was given, or we didn't even know that the Holy Ghost was. 
So Paul was checking to see if they needed the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, so they could do the miracles and do the prophecies, right? What did they know yeah. about the Holy Spirit? Nothing. nothing. They knew nothing. That's like saying to somebody, have you learned algebra and calculus yet with numbers? And the person said, what's a number? <laughs> Should you start teaching them calculus and algebra? You got to start out with numbers. You got to start out with numbers. Okay, so let's draw Paul asking these questions. All right, I think by this time, Paul grew his beard back, and that's good because he looked kind of weird without his beard. All right, so here's Paul, and he's asking his questions, and there's his tongue wagging. Oh, look at this luscious, wonderful beard. Good for Paul. He's got a beard back. And there's his preaching, questioning hand. And he's got feet. Good for him. And here is they um, they when they're answering the question, did they know good answers or were they kind of curious? I don't know how to draw curious. Sometimes you guys do a really good job at curious. I'm going to draw like a kind of a squiggly mouth and there's their hand like they're thinking about what he's saying. You guys, I've seen you guys do some really good jobs at drawing curious, but he's got really cool wavy hair. All right, now here is the thing. Are they being good listeners or are they being ugly with Paul? They're being very good. Good listener. Yeah, they're being good listeners. Do they know everything? No. No, but they're being good listeners. So I'll draw them in, in blue. Blue is usually like the disciple or the, the good listener color, okay? And if you want, you can draw that they've got a question mark. I don't know about the Holy Spirit, okay? So his first question was, did you receive the Holy Spirit? And they said, well, we didn't even know about that. And so then is his next question, into what then were you baptized? Do you remember what their, question, their answer is to that? Into what were you baptized? John. Their answer was baptism in John. Yeah, the baptism of John. He's asking them about baptism, and they said, We know about John's baptism. And who is John? We talked about this last time, but let's get this straight. Who is John? The well, he no, John, the, not, not John the Apostle, John, John the Baptist. Baptist. John the Baptist. We what should we Jesus should draw John the Baptist because he's fun to draw. What do we know about John the Baptist? He baptized me. Always can draw him baptized. He baptized people. Does the Bible say anything about how he looked? He wore. He wore. He wore a camel skin and a leather belt. And what did he eat? So that means he's fun to draw, right? And locusts. He probably had crazy hair, I think. Wild locusts and honey. So I'm giving him some crazy hair. Be quiet. And here is his cloak and his hand. And in his hand, he's got a pot of honey. I don't know if it'd be a pot, but you get the idea. Like like um, Winnie the Pooh. Uh, how does Winnie the Pooh spell honey? H U N Y. N N N N N Y. <laughs> honey. He's he's got a spelled honey pot, and his hand is so big that he can also hold grasshoppers and locusts. <laughs> he's got really long fingers. Okay, and I'll draw another uh, a locust. We drew locusts back when we were doing the book of Revelation. Luckily, these locusts aren't as scary and don't have as long a hair. All right. So there's your, oh, and we have to make his garment look like it's hairy. You just put like hair lines on it. And I'm going to say that he was barefoot. It's a. Uh it's um, a rough jacket because it's camel skin. Yep. 
not as nice of a jacket. He's not wearing silk. But what was he doing? Was he just walking around looking weird for a living? No. No, he was baptizing. Baptizing. He was baptizing little Christians. Yeah, I'll put the water part down. So I'm going to draw water down here. Good guy, he's not a bad guy. Yeah. Here's the water. Honestly, I think he would probably be in the water too, but I wanted to draw him out there with his lunch. So there's the water. Okay. So they had heard about John the Baptist, and they had heard that John the Baptist was a good guy. Was John the Baptist a good guy? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Did John the Baptist teach all the truth? No. No. Does that mean John the Baptist was wrong? No. He's not wrong, is he? Did he know all the truth? No. Had no. all the truth been revealed yet? No. Oh. no. He talked about Jesus. Did, did he talk about Jesus' death and resurrection? Yes. No. No, he didn't no. talk about the death. Why didn't John the Baptist talk about Jesus' death and re resurrection? It didn't happen yet. It didn't happen yet. So if you are teaching John's teaching, are you, do you know all the truth yet? No. No. So what does Paul come in and do? Gives them all the truth. Gives them the rest of the story. All right, let me get into this. So what is the rest of the story? John baptized with a baptism of repentance, which is what our re baptism is too. We were repenting from past sins, saying unto people that they should believe on him who would come after him on Jesus. So John was saying, yes, be baptized, but believe on somebody. And who are they supposed to believe on? Jesus. Jesus. All right. So what do you think they did when they heard that preaching from Paul? They, when they heard this, they were baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus, not just in John's baptism, but into the name of the Lord Jesus. So here I'm going to draw him um, happy. And uh, he's got his wavy hair still. Maybe it's even wavier because he's in the water. Uh and he's got his hand up in the air because now he's happy. And let me draw water. Is this blue? This is blue. And I'll draw the water. And there he is in the water. Okay. Yay for him. They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Well, now we can draw his mouth open and the message coming out right and you can draw arrows like the message is shooting out really fast all right so that's what's going on here hold on just one second so that's what's going on. They're getting baptized and they're getting the spirit and that's really exciting. So John the Baptist started baptizing, but he didn't have all the message. So Paul finished the message. So here's something really interesting. Um, is it okay if you just read one book of the Bible? No. No, yes. we try to read more of it, right? We got to check yeah. all the message and all the truth. Uh, if you go to church one time, that's a good thing. Should you keep going? Yes. Yeah. Yes. If you read something in the Bible, that's a great thing. Should you keep reading? Yeah. Yes. yes. What about when yes. you learned it all? When does that happen? Never. Never. We're always learning more stuff, right? That's kind of a neat thing to think about. Okay. So it says that they there was about 12 of those men that that happened with. Okay. What does Paul do after that? Now, in the rest of the city, he goes into the synagogue and he spoke, spoke boldly for the space of about three months. So he's preaching there in the synagogue for three months. All right, I'm going to draw Paul speaking boldly so that he's got a really long tongue and he's really talking with all his boldness and he's talking about Jesus 
and he's got his preacher hand. I don't want to say he's being ugly. I just thought, I don't know how to draw. He's a pretty bold guy, right? So I just thought that's him speaking with even more boldness. And for three months, how long did he get to preach in Thessalonica? Do you remember that? How many Sabbaths? Three. Three. Only three Sabbaths, which might be almost like a half a month or a whole month. How many Sabbaths does he preach in this the synagogue in Ephesus? Three. Three months worth, so three times, like 12 or more Sabbaths. So it's a longer time. So that's good. That's good. They're, they're listening to him a little bit longer. He's reasoning and persuading as to the things concerning the kingdom of God. But when some were hardened, here I'll do that in red, they were hardened and they were disobedient, speaking evil of the way. What's the way? Speaking evil of the way. Doing, doing the things God should do. Yeah, the message of God, the message of God, good one, of things to do. So they're speaking evil of the way before the multitude. He departed from them and separated the disciples, reasoning daily in the school of Tyrannus. So what did he do when they were not listening to the truth? What did he do? He preached boldly. He kept preaching boldly. Did he keep doing it in the synagogue? No, no he went no. to another place. And that place is called the School of Tyrannus. So probably the idea is it was a building and now I get to draw. I don't know what a school looks like back then. I'm going to draw it like a temple with columns because those are fun to draw. Um, it was probably just a, a place where they let him meet with people and teach the Bible. Probably since it already is a school, a place of teaching, they thought, well, this is a good place for you to keep teaching. So there's that, there's that, and there. Now it looks like a cool school temple-y thing. That's kind of fun. All right, now we're going to continue. And this continued, oh, we're going to continue with the word continue. This continued for the space of two years. Isn't that great? How long does he get to preach there? That's longer than I was in Corinth. You're right. Good catch. This is a long stay for Paul. This is excellent. That means that the people in the city aren't getting so grouchy about him, right? That's really yeah. good. So that all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord. What is Asia? Isn't it where Turkey is now? City. Where Turkey is. Asia is a place, right? Asia yeah. is a place. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw a map on the board. That means I have to draw, erase some of John the Baptist. I'm going to do a little quick map. Now, today, what we call Asia, if you draw the whole globe and you've got Africa and Middle East and India, and then Asia is all this Africa, Europe, Asia is all this stuff up here, right? Yeah. That's all Asia today. And that is not the, what the word Asia in the Bible means. Oh, I'm dropping a lot of stuff today. In the Bible, Asia meant this. All right, so we have our little map. All right, and Ephesus is right here. Asia is this. I don't even know if it goes much farther than that. Asia is just this little section right here. Now, it's a lot of land, but it's not the whole half of the earth. Uh-huh. So, Paul is in this one little city. Does it say that he leaves the city, or does it say that he stayed there for two years? He stayed there. He stayed there for two years. So how did the whole area hear Paul's preaching if he stayed in one spot? The people were moving. Other people going and spreading it. There's a couple ideas about that. 
uh, the city he was in was an important city. So maybe farmers from out of town brought their stuff into Ephesus and heard Paul and then went back home. Or maybe someone in, who lived in Ephesus heard Paul and then moved out to another place. But the idea is here, Paul stayed still, but did the gospel stay still? No. So you can draw arrows where it's moving out. This is an important idea. Was it Paul's job to preach the gospel and spread the word? Yes. Yes. How did he get the word out that far, though? Did he do that? No, no. God. People shared God's word. So here's the question. Are you Paul? No. 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 You're not. You're not Paul. Are you people? Yeah. 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 Yes. yes. So we still know what we have to do. Yeah. We still know yeah. what we have to do. We have to be like those people and keep sharing God's word. All right. So everyone in Asia got to hear about it. Let me get this a little bit bigger here. Everyone in Asia heard about it. Uh, they heard about the Lord, both Jews and Greeks. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul. Ah, oh, miracles. This is fun. In so much that unto the sick were carried away from his body handkerchiefs or aprons from the diseases, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out. So it used to be that Paul would touch somebody and they'd be healed. But in this time, here's Paul. He's looking off in this direction. He's a happy guy, right? And he gets done with this handkerchief. I'm guessing he's not giving them used handkerchiefs because that sounds disgusting. But here's the little handkerchief, okay? And I'm going to make it orange. I'm just going to make it an orange handkerchief. He is dropping his orange handkerchief and it goes into this person's hand. And what do they do with that handkerchief? Make it into aprons. Well, they could, but what were they doing with the sick people about it? Helping them. Yeah. If they took the handkerchief to the person who was sick and they put the orange handkerchief on the person, what happened to the person? Got healed. He healed from the power of a handkerchief. No. From the power of God. From the power of God. But here's the funny thing. That was the handkerchief that did it, right? So it kind of proves, is Paul a magic man? No. Yeah. no, but the power of God was in Paul so that the power from God, I'm going to draw, here's the power from God coming down into Paul and into the handkerchief and the handkerchief goes to this person and then it goes through the arrow into here and then into the sick person. And what's the result? He's, it, now I just put a blue line all over it so it's not as pretty anymore, but you get the idea. This is a really neat idea that Paul was helping people so much. It's kind of hard to believe that a handkerchief could do all that. It's because it's God. <laughs> Here's another fun story to draw. But there were also some uh, traveling Jews, exorcists, uh, who took upon the name of which them that who took upon them to name over them, which had evil spirits in the name of the Lord Jesus by saying, I adjure you or I command you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. And there were seven sons of Sceva, uh, a Jew, uh, uh, a Jew, a chief priest, which did this. Okay, this is complicated language. There were uh, so many people who were hearing about Jesus that there were some guys who said, we are going to cast out demons in the name of Jesus. Were they believers in Jesus? No. No. They just wanted to use Jesus as like a magic word. 
which is just silly. Jesus isn't a magic word. And the evil spirit answered and said, so he, now we have to draw a guy with an evil spirit. So basically he should be a normal person, but the evil spirit is kind of making him wonky, right? So here's the evil spirit and he's got crazy hair. What does he say? Jesus, I know. And Paul, I know. But who are you? And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and mastered both of all of them and prevailed against them so that they ran out, fled out of the house, naked and wounded. Okay. Can you tell me what happened in this story? So someone was like, I'll cast out demons too. And then some, and then a demon said, I know who Jesus is. I know who Paul is. Who are you? And then attacked them. And they ran up naked and wounded. Yep. So did the person call on Jesus in faith? No. 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 It's like they called on Jesus as an abracadabra word. That's pretty yeah. vain. That's pretty silly. And did the demon uh, mm -hmm. obey the name of Jesus in faith? No. No. What did the demon do to those guys? Attacked them. He attacked them. He attacked them. He beat them up. He ripped their clothes apart and they ran out naked. Oh my goodness. Now, the word naked in the Bible can mean mostly your clothes are off. Even when Adam and Eve were wearing fig leaves, they were called naked. So that's how I'm going to draw it. So here's his punch. You draw a big punching arm, and you can draw muscles on that arm. And here's their eyes. And they're getting hit. So there's the face getting smashed. And I'm going to draw, there's their hands, and there's another hand, and they're just in their shorts. Blah. Those are big feet. feet. Yeah, well, that's true. <laughs> so there he is, and he is beating them up. These are the, the, the punch lines. Really them. I figured you guys would have fun drawing this picture of a demon guy beating up people and smacking them. So that's kind of fun. All right. We're going to, oh, and this became known to all, both Jews and Greeks that dwelt in Ephesus. And fear fell upon them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. This story really scared and surprised people. It should scare and surprise them. Okay, we're going to close the study with that part right there. And in our next class, we will uh, look at the rest of Paul's activities in Ephesus. Do you have any questions about that? This chapter uh, has lots of little stories in it. Paul talks to those guys in Ephesus that didn't know about the Holy Spirit. They only knew about John. So, so actually, I should draw this, right? Is the story of John the Baptist enough for us today? No. No. The story we need is this story. We need the story of Jesus being raised from the dead. It might be the most important story in the Bible. I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. Now, here's yeah. something. We were talking earlier. Is it okay if you only read one book of the Bible? Well, it's good to read. Uh, you should read it all, right? Yeah. yeah. If you were going to tell somebody only one, if you only had a few minutes to tell somebody a story from the Bible, What's the most important one to tell them? Jesus being resurrected. Yeah. 
that's probably that's probably it. You could maybe you could do God created the heavens and the earth, and you can talk to them about how God is good and God is creator. Or you could talk about Jesus dying for our sins and being raised from the dead. I think really that's the most important story. We need to tell more stories from the Bible, but if you only have time for one story, that's a good story to do. All right, do you guys have any questions before we close? Why, how did the gospel spread with a few people that obeyed God? I think what happened was people would hear it and then they'd go home and they'd tell their family. Maybe it was a boy who's 22 years old and he'd go home and he'd tell his daddy and his mom and his sisters. And maybe he had a girlfriend and he told her and then he told the girlfriend's family. I think it probably spread through family peoples talking to family peoples. Oh. The gospel is spread a lot today. Anything else? No. All right. So I will see you guys later. Have fun. Bye. Bye.